From One Great City Brewing, this is Tipsy Cow Milk Stout. They describe it as having a dark malt character of coffee and chocolate balanced by lactose, lending it added body and sweetness. I've had this guy before, and it is, in fact, a very nice little beer. So, um, I think I mentioned uh, recently that I just got a garage built, finally, after years and years and years of saying I was going to do it. I spent my uh, COVID vacation money on building myself a garage. So, I've got to come up with a few amenities. And one of the first amenities for any guy that's going to be spending some time in the garage is to have some tunes. Now, I've got these old, clunky, used computer speakers that I think will do a fine job just for making some noise in there. But since most modern phones don't have a 3.5 millimeter jack on them anymore, arr, I'm, uh, I'm not going to use this, although I suppose I could use it with an MP3 player. And actually, that's probably a good way to test to make sure this thing works. Um, but ultimately, I think I'm going to use something else. But first... As I mentioned, let's just see if these things work. Uh, that's the cable coming from that one to the back of this one. So this one's got all the electronics in it, including a power supply, no wall wart here. Um, and then this one is just a speaker in a box and nothing else. So plug that in off camera. Oh, hey, look, a power light. That's a good sign. Okay, turn this guy on. Oh, there we go. Royalty free music. It gets reasonably loud. Not so loud that you can't uh, yak with a buddy while you're, uh, while you're messing around with something in the garage or whatever, but uh, I think that'll be okay passive speaker there's nothing really to do with it the active one i think i am going to add a, a module to it um oh there we go mp3 player fm tuner module so i have a few different mp3 players but if I want to do that, I could just, like I said, use this MP3 player or this one or some other MP3 player. But nah, I'm going to use this one, which also has an FM receiver built into it. Plus it can take the MP3 uh, on uh, TF or mini or micro SD. Can't remember why they trans flash, something like that. I don't know. Anyway. But it's also uh, got a USB jack that you can plug into it. Uh, and you can plug in an auxiliary input. Anyway, this thing's got a couple of little bits that cover up the screw holes. So that should make it nice and easy to mount. Just using those screw holes. And I think, well, I'll open the speaker up and see where there's room. But I'm hoping that there's going to be room just on one of those sides there. So they can mount it. I don't know. We'll see. There's four Phillips screws in the back of this thing. Spin those out and see what we can find inside. Obviously, there's going to be a power supply of some sort in there. Hopefully, we can tap some power out of it for this thing. It shouldn't be too hard. Optionally, I suppose I could just butcher up a power, another power supply. I got lots of USB power supplies or something. Actually... What voltage does this thing need? Hmm, I should have thought of that. Five volts, it says. Okay. Hopefully, there is five volts in there. There's that come apart. Well, that was easy. So, what have we got in here? It's an old school power supply. We have a transformer back there. 120 volts in, 10 volts out at 0.4 amps. So that transformer is putting up 10 volts AC on these two yellow wires, uh, which come down to there and then get switched by that switch. Okay, I'm going to guess that after this little bridge rectifier here, oh, and a Zener diode, and a capacitor, 
capacitor is rated for 16 volts, so I'm going to guess that that's a 12 volt power supply in there, which means we are going to have to knock it down for the radio. But that's not going to be that difficult. The other thing that we need is to pick up on the incoming audio, which is that cable right there. I'm not sure if I should leave that connected or not. Uh, this thing doesn't really have a power on off on it, so I don't really have, want to have the output of that connected to something else at the same time. So what I will do is just remove that, replace that with this, and then I need to find a mechanical place for this so that it doesn't crash into things. I think if I just put it about there, maybe it further down, I think about there will clear just about everything. So I think I need to make the hole about that big. Let's just use something a bit more precise to make a mark with than the Sharpie. Notice how carefully I'm centering that. Not at all, not at all. Ooh, that needs to be about that much. Which is, yeah, okay. So let's go there and there. Right. Once I've got that cut out, I'll just drop that in and mark the screw holes afterwards. Huh, that was a little fumy, but I think we got pretty close. Let's give it a little bit of a knife action in the corners. I think we got it. I mean, now will it go? There we go. Proper tool for the job. Proper Robertson screwdriver. I'll just go through and clean up some of that melt and fine-tune my cut and we'll see if it fits ah yeah like a glove kind of a sloppy loose glove but a glove nonetheless and then I think I do since that's the front I think I do want it sitting that way and where'd my sharpie go sharp hay let's put the screw holes there. So we had guessed earlier that this thing was 12 volts. So let's power it on. Oh, it is on. Okay. Let's just see what is across that cap. 12.07 volts DC. Excellent. And the back side is the negative. That's the positive on the front side. Right. Now we've got to figure out how to make 5 volts out of that. Which shouldn't be too hard with our old friend, the 7805. Yes, the good old 7805. A 5 volt linear regulator. Yes, it's not the most efficient way of uh, converting power. But it is nice and smooth. And for something that's plugged into the wall, efficiency is less important. Besides, I mean, it's just a linear power supply down there anywhere. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a big deal. But we do want the smoothness that comes with the linear regulator. So I shall use a, one of those. A few moments later. So there's just a basic little 705 regulator circuit. Uh, input pin on the left, ground pin on the middle, output pin on the right, uh, capacitor across ground and the output. Not strictly necessary, but good uh, good practice. This particular one happens to be 47 microfarads. Could use just about anything depending on how heavy your load is. Um, that's just one random one that I happen to have lying around. So, that's connected. Nudge that out of the way. Hook that guy in there and do the same thing. 
There, we have voltage. Five volts precisely. Nice. Well, close enough anyway. And that's going to take a while to discharge. All right. That ought to do it. Of these three, the middle one is the ground and the outer two are the left and right. Do I care which is left and which is right? Not really. Audio input or outputs, I guess, and the power wire that sits like that. Let's just be brave and screw it down right now, shall we? That wasn't so bad. I probably should do something about that thing to make it a little bit less likely to short out and cause a explosion. So this stuff, you may remember, is heat shrink for going over 18650 cells, but it looks like it's just about the right size to go over that as well. So let's try it. In normal uh, circumstances, I would be a little bit more concerned about that heat sink tab, but this thing's not going to be drawing that much power, so I am less concerned. That stuff shrinks down fast. Wow. There. That's mostly protected, and the heat sink sticks out just a little bit too... No, it shouldn't. I think I will put a second little bit over top of that just so that it's not flopping around and it's probably not going to hit anything crucial or sparky but you never know just for extra good measure with heat shrink while it's hot you give it one of those it'll sort of bond to itself there. I am very confident this is going to work, so I'm willing to take the risk that I can put it together before testing it. Place your bets down in the comments. Okay, let's see what happens. Turns on. From pillow top mattresses to downfill duvets to plush pillows. Nice. Let's put a SD card into it. And see what it does. Oh, okay. Nice. It's found it. So it looks like there's only one thing left to do is that those little caps on there and I think we are done I guess I'll have to hang it up in the garage but uh, oh that's another job for another day this I'm going to declare is finished and it didn't even take that long well thanks for watching I, uh, I appreciate that as always any comments or questions down in the comment section below as usual I know this wasn't an earth-shattering project, but it was what I was doing, so I figured I'd roll the camera and bring you along. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.